Hey everyone, are you ready to hear the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro news? Well, you've come to the right place. But let's be real, you probably already knew that. So let's go. Hey, Kerry and Berries, I'm Berry, and Kerry is not here because today is a very special episode. As you probably gathered, the new iPhones have come out. So how's it all going, everyone? Hope you're doing all right. Um, let's get started, right? Okay, so iPhone is something that Kerry and I use every day. We are iPhone addicts. The iPhone is also something a lot of our viewers use. Whether you're a fan of iPhone or you're an Android addict, it's kind of major when a new phone of any operating system is released. Right? By the end of this video, you'll either be jealous, happy you stuck with Android, a delighted Apple owner, or just about ready to switch to Android. So let us know what your thoughts are. Are you an Android addict or an iPhone... <sighs> Idiot. <laughs> So we're gonna start off with the regular iPhone 13. The design of the phone. The sides are still aluminium between two slabs of glass. The sizes are 6.1 inches for the regular size and 5.4 inch for the iPhone mini. Now what colors have we got? We've got red, starlight, midnight, blue, pink. Just thinking they're tossing out random colors and names here, aren't they? Some are extravagant and some are just boring. It's got the same MagSafe magnet accessory on the back, so nothing's changed there. It has the industry leading water resistance rating of IP68. Now, the drop test. Unfortunately, I haven't got it to drop it, but if I did have it, I wouldn't drop it anyway. It has a ceramic shield front cover for extra durability, which is always helpful. Now, the battery. The Mini gets 1.5 hours more than the previous Mini, and the larger gets 2.5 hours more. Now, that is significant. Data. It's got 5G, fully loaded. Not helpful. Oh, really, to be honest at all. But it's there. The display, still using OLED, but this time it's got a Super Retina XDR display. They just cannot stop thinking of different names for these displays because they ran out a long time ago. So I just got to stick extra random letters on it, innit? It does have a 28% increase in brightness when you're out and about. And this is at 800 nits. And peak brightness for HDR content actually goes up to 1,200 nits. Now the geek specs. It has an A15 Bionic. Didn't change that name though, did they? As ever, the fastest CPU ever. Well, it was hardly going to be the slowest, was it? Still got a six core CPU, but it's got two new high performance and four new high efficiency cores. What about the RAM? Okay, it looks like it's got four gigabytes of RAM from what we can tell so far. But how much faster is it? Well, apparently it's 50% faster than the competition. The competition, whatever that means. Graphics up to 30% higher, faster, I mean, than the competition. It's more power efficient. The new 16 core neural engine is capable of 15.8 trillion operations per second. I don't know what you're gonna be doing on your phone to cause all that to happen, but. I'd uh, probably rather not know. The storage options. So they've been increased with Apple offering 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, and 512 gigabytes. Again, whatever you're doing with your phone to fill them up that large, I don't have a clue. Let's look at the camera. It's got a redesigned rear camera layout with diagonally arranged lenses, which enable the advanced dual camera system. The tech specs are going over my head here. I think it just means it's better. It's got the same great camera as before, but with a 47% larger sensor for the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, enabling dark environments photography improvements. It also comes with a 120 degree field of view and a faster F. 2.4 lens. The same sensor shift stabilization is included in this phone, but this time it physically moves the wide sensor to reduce vibrations, and that's pretty clever. Photographic profiles allow you to have greater customization when taking photos, and this happens during the actual shooting of the photo and not just effects you can add on in post-production, making it a Heck of a lot more of a more nicer photo, really. It's, it's not so fake. 
It's more real. Cinematic mode brings a cinematic feel to your videos, making it feel cinematic. During this mode, the camera locks to the subject, even when the subject's moving, follows them around the room, automatically blurring the background. Amazing. And it does this automatically and dynamically. Even when somebody else walks through the room, it can detect they're coming through. And generally, this cinematic mode just makes your videos look cinematic, hence the name. The release date. Okay, so if you're in Australia, Canada, China, Germany, India, Japan, the UK, the US, and more than 30 other countries, according to Apple's website, you'll be able to pre-order the iPhone 13 and 13 mini on Friday, September the 17th. And that's at 5 a.m. PDT time. And you can actually grab the phone itself that you've pre-ordered on Friday. September the 24th. Oh, um, also the notch on the phone has been slimmed down a little bit. Nothing too mad, but it's a little bit smaller. The price starts at $799 in the US for the regular iPhone 13. And for the iPhone 13 mini in the US, the price is $699. At least a pounds then. Talking of pounds, in the UK, the iPhone 13 regular is £779. Whereas the iPhone mini is £679. Now let's talk about the iPhone 13 Pro. The design of the phone. So it's created using multiple layers of nanometer scale ceramics applied across the surface for a stunning and durable finish. Now the colors are a little bit different as well. So they've got graphite, gold, Silver and the all new Sierra Blue. Nothing too crazy, is there? Where's the rumor of the pink? Oh, yeah, that was coming as well. Didn't arrive though, did it? Let's have a look at the sizes. So you've got 6.1 inches for the iPhone 13 Pro regular, and for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you've got 6.7 inches. I thought these sizes were supposed to be changing from the rumors. Not a lot has changed since last year, let's be completely honest. Here. Screen durability. So we know that the screens are covered with a ceramic shield thingy, but it's apparently tougher than any smartphone glass, which offers crazy durability if you drop it. Water resistance. Now this is one that I really need for myself because I keep breaking my bones by dropping them in water all the time. Okay, I use them in the shower. That's what I do a lot. So again, an industry leading water resistance rating of IP68. What about the battery? Now this is where it gets good. So it's got the highest battery life out of all phones ever iPhones, I mean. The iPhone 13 Pro regular has 1.5 hours greater battery than the previous iPhone Pro. But get this, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has 2.5 hours greater battery. Yay! And considering these batteries were already fairly good, that's quite good. It's 5G capable. Yay. Let's look at that display. Has it got a refresh rate upgrade? Yeah, it does. And it's about the only selling feature that actually makes this phone look interesting than the year before. Look any more interesting than the year before. So it goes from 10 hertz up to 120 hertz. And this dynamically and automatically changes depending on your use case and your needs, depending on you and what you're scrolling through. It will change by itself. Thankfully, Hopefully you don't have to keep changing the settings because that would just be a nightmare. The brightness. Okay, so the maximum brightness has gone up 25% outdoors. And this is a thousand nits. And that is for whatever activity you were doing on your phone. Obviously we've got the A15 chip again, like the old, like the other phone. But, but it's more power efficient. We've got the more power efficient A15 chip. Looks like it's got four gigabytes of RAM. I know we're getting a bit repetitive here. It's got an always on touch coprocessor. Um, storage options, 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, and the all new one terabyte storage option, the camera. The rear camera system has a new design with a beautiful stainless steel trim surrounding each sapphire crystal lens. Yes, I just nicked that phrase from Apple's website. New ultra wide, wide and telephoto camera, macro photography ability now using the ultra wide camera and up to 2.5 two times improved low light performance on the new wide camera. Obviously you've got all the photography uh, styles to shoot with as I was saying before. Uh, night mode improved and looks brilliant. It's breathtaking photos you can take when you're out and about at 
night. So obviously again, cinematic mode on the on the video, uh, macro video you can take, and even better low light performance. But it has got end-to-end -end workflows in Dolby Vision. Oh, by the way, you get ProRes, and that is pretty huge. It's got a pretty huge lens too on the iPhone. This is the largest lens ever on an iPhone. Reducing the noise, making faster shutter speeds, and producing more detailed photos. So basically just a load of camera improvements. If you're not desperate for this iPhone, not many reasons to be, you might as well get the one before. 20% smaller notch, which is nice, but uh, let's look at the price. The regular iPhone 13 Pro is £949. The Pro Max is £1,049. Anything over a thousand starts to sound incredibly high, doesn't it? But in America, the regular Pro is $999. The Pro Max, $1,099. My favourite feature of... Camera improvements, I take loads of photos. I would say cinematic mode, but I use a Canon M50, so I won't be needing that. I love the battery life, always needed with me. But do you know what? Water resistance, actually, I've got to be honest, is probably what I'm most looking forward to because I can finally use my phone again without freaking out that I'm gonna break it. Even my current one's been repaired so many times because I keep getting water inside it. That is why I'm upgrading to the new iPhone because I can't stand using a phone that feels like it's about to break at any minute. My overall opinion of the updates are very small, I just think they're really, it's barely even worth being called 12S to be honest, let alone 13. What colour am I thinking of? Um, blue, because it's different. But there was rumours of a bronze colour coming and I was wanting to get that. That was the exciting colour to, to me and because of that, I'm highly disappointed so I'm gonna have to stick with blue but still not interesting enough to me. What about you? Uh, what am I most disappointed in? There's nothing that really says this is why the iPhone 13 deserves to be called 13. There's nothing really there, is there? I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to NordVPN who sponsor our YouTube channel. Um, if you've not signed up with them, they are an amazing company. You need to protect your online privacy like never before these days. And I don't know where I'd be without using a VPN every day. So get it today whilst it's on a fantastic deal. Be sure to share this video with somebody you think might find a video about an iPhone 13 being rather pointlessly dull. Interesting. Subscribe, hit that notification notification button. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Phones are great, technology is great and it's all fun and games whilst you're enjoying the hype of it but life is about more than just tech. You know life is about the real world. Uh, getting outside into the great outdoors and putting our phones down for a bit. At the end of the day tech is just tech. So thanks for coming and um yeah yeah Oh. Oh.